Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Today I'm going to walk you guys through how to build a gravel road or a gravel driveway. Clay, number two, number 53, number eight. Now I know I've done this in a prior video, but today's video is a little different in that I actually have roads or driveways in three different stages of build. So you can kind of see in more detail the different steps or layers of the driveway. I also have four quad axles of number 53 stone on the way to do some maintenance. They're gonna be tailgating some of that and I'll probably end up spreading some of it myself with the tractor. So let's get busy. So the first step in building any road or driveway is gonna to be to get down to soil that can support the stone you're gonna put on it. Here in central Indiana, we can get down to clay at about six or eight inches. So what we typically do is take the tractor and box blade and rip that top soil off until you get to that layer. Now I don't have any ripping to do for you guys today, but I will go over here and show you the difference between clay and topsoil. So if you've watched any of my other videos where I was moving topsoil and clay from my lawn, this area probably looks pretty familiar to you. Anyway, that pile back there is topsoil and all of this is clay. Now let me show you a little closer why clay is so great at supporting a road structure. You can see here all these imprints from the backhoe and tractors I roll through here. Let me find one that's good and dried out. Oh, here you go. You can see this imprint from the backhoe. And even when I try to take my thumbnail and push in here, you can't hardly indent this at all. So you imagine then placing stone on top of this and the amount of force that it would take to push through this hard packed clay. It's a great road base. Topsoil, on the other hand, does not provide much structure. And even when it does dry out, and it's tough to find a dry spot right now because this stuff drinks up the water, it still remains very soft and spongy. Very easy to see how rocks could press through this. So I highlight that difference for you between clay and topsoil because I am a big proponent of not using geotextile fabric. And I know a lot of people might disagree with me on that, but here's my standpoint. If you can get down to virgin ground that has nothing but clay, you don't need geotextile fabric. If you're building a road on loamy soil or topsoil and that's all you have to work with, then I would advise putting down geotextile fabric. And so the point of geotextile fabric is to prevent your stone from pressing further down into the earth and essentially losing it, thus having to add more and more over time. But like I said, out here, we have nothing but clay and we've always just built our roads straight on the clay without using geotextile fabric. So if you have ground like we do, you can go ahead and forego that fabric. Change the scenery while I yap to you guys. All right, so you're down to clay and you have no geotextile fabric down or you're stuck with topsoil, loamy soil, and you have your geotextile fabric down. What next? So the next step is to put down number two limestone. Now that's what it's called here in central Indiana. In your part of the country or world, it may be named something different, but in the end, it's the same product. Let me show you. So what you see before you is number two limestone. Now this road or drive or barn lot is currently only built out of number two limestone. And you can see here, it's a pretty sizable product. That one there, size of a baseball, some smaller mixed in here, but you're gonna get baseball to softball size stone in number two all the way down to call it a ping pong ball size. No dust, just clean limestone. And so, like I said, this road is nothing but number two. Initially, when you first put this down, it's gonna be very bumpy. It takes a lot of compaction from heavy equipment or just lots of traffic on it to really press this down to, down to get it to lock together, but it provides a fantastic base. Also, I do want to point out this right here is not number two limestone being pressed into the soil. This is actually soil that got dropped on top of here as I was moving a lot of dirt for the house. All of this is the base layer that's been down for probably a year and a half to two years. I'm going to walk it through so you guys can see it. Again, this is dirt after the fact, but this provides a fantastic base. And what I would advise is get this layer down, have, have traffic on it for a while whether it's tractors, backhoes, whatever, or just vehicular traffic. Now this can be pretty rough until it's packed down in a passenger car or even a pickup. But in time, you can see here how well it just kind of seats and provides a fantastic layer. These larger stones do a nice job of preventing any pressing into the soil. So that's why you start with this layer. Now right here in front of the tractor, this has been dressed with 53, number 53 limestone. And you can see the difference when we go from number two to number two with 53 on top of it. And let me just tell you that once you have this layer on, the, the drive becomes much more smooth. And so what is 53? 
Well, 53 is stone anywhere from, call it a little bit bigger than a half dollar, all the way down to these tiny little pieces and a lot of dust you can see in here. Now, what all this little stuff does is packs in the crevices of this number two. So you can see how we're going from a larger stone to smaller and really filling in the gaps to make this one cohesive road. So this number two limestone road behind me goes out to a barn. It's really fine for what it is. If you have nothing more than some construction traffic or you're taking a tractor backhoe down a road here and there, you don't really need to go beyond that. Number two would be just fine. I am gonna put 53 on it simply because we drive vehicles out there to the pond. Passenger vehicles make their way out there. So it will be nice to have it a little more smooth when people roll through here. So a road built out of two and 53 is perfectly fine for residential use. Passenger vehicles, pickups, delivery vans are all fine on a road built that way. And that's currently what we have going up to our house. The one thing you can do to take this even a step further to make it even nicer is to add number eight limestone. Let me show you what that is. So here in front of me, we can kind of start to see everything coming together. This is a road built out of nothing but number two. You got a little bit over here. of two and 53 you can see how much it has filled in and there's the first load of 53 that they just dumped you'll see and then this road here is 253 and number eight now it's a little bit beat up right through here because of all the construction traffic but as we come up this way you can just see how fine number eight limestone is no dust every one about the size of a nickel or so nickel and dime i wish that's what it cost but this provides a very clean surface to drive on and very smooth. The reason I emphasize clean is because if you look at this freshly dumped 53, A, it's got some moisture in it, which highlights what I'm about ready to tell you perfectly. But you can see the amount of residue or grime that's really in it. Now this is fantastic for building a road. It packs so well, but when you get heavy rains, some of the stuff will kick up on the rear of your car. And that's often when you see people go on gravel roads and they have the swoop behind their tires where they don't have mud flaps. It's because of that dust and like that. So to recap, when building a gravel driveway or road, get down to your clay if you have it. If you don't have clay, then put your geotextile fabric down. From there, add your number two limestone, get some rain, traffic, anything you can do to really compact it down well. Then move on to your 53 limestone. Again, more compaction would be great. Ultimately, lay your number eight stone down. I recommend doing these things in waves because the more compaction you can get between layers, the better. Now I'm gonna spin around and show you guys this 53 versus the destroyed road from construction and just show you the difference. And then uh, I'm gonna get the tractor out and start cleaning this stuff up. So again, here is the road that was built out of number two, 53, and ultimately number eight. But it's a gravel road. It's gonna get beat up over time. You're gonna have to add gravel back. And in this case, we built the house. We had significant amount of concrete trucks rolling through here, which really did a lot more damage in a few months than you know a few years out of vehicle traffic would do. But you can see when you come in and add gravel, just how nice it looks. All right, let's grade this out. One other thing I wanted to mention to you guys, obviously if you're gonna be doing this kind of work, you're gonna need a piece of equipment. Now if you do it commercially, a skid steer is probably the way to go. If you own some acreage and this is for your homestead, I would go with a compact tractor. There's just so many uses for a piece of equipment like this around a large property. And also, if you can get a top and tilt kit on your tractor on the rear, be able to angle this box blade, it makes life so much easier. And truly, you don't even need something this big. This is a John Deere 4 Series, 52 horsepower. And that's a big box blade. You can get it done with something quite a bit smaller. It just takes you more time and fuel, but that's the enjoyable part. So that's the gist on building roads. Clay, number two, number 53, number eight. In that order, 
with time, rain, and compaction in between each layer. If you don't have clay, start with the geotextile fabric and repeat the same process that I just outlined. So, now that you guys know how to build a road, why don't you sit back and watch the tractor do some work, maybe hit the subscribe button, and come see me again sometime. Now we just wait for dump trucks two, three, and four. And there's load number two. Hey, it doesn't look like they're filling it very full to me, but could be perspective, I suppose. the third load in and cleaned up just one more to go which will take us out to the barn lot and I'm starting to think that four may not have been enough but we'll stretch it to make it work this is in a high traffic area so take a peek at this up here where that dump truck drove across it after I spread it out you can see how this can become very very smooth once you get compaction like this on your 53 everywhere, then you can start putting some eights on there. Even just how I'm walking, you guys can hear how smooth it is versus the crunchy, unpacked 53. And my squeaky shoes. Fourth and final load is in. Just gonna grade this one out. And Call it a day. Decided to have this be smooth though, instead of the bumpy number two. So I didn't end up with as much coverage in the barn lot as I'd hoped, but it's a barn lot, it'll work. I'd rather keep more of the gravel up this way where people actually drive. So to recap guys, when you're building your gravel roads or driveways, get down to clay, lay in your number two stone, then your number 53, ultimately your number eight. Keep in mind that there's a good chance that the naming conventions of these stones are different across the country. So you may have to figure out what these translate to in your local area. But this is something you can definitely do yourself. If you have a piece of equipment or even have access to a piece of equipment, you guys can go out there and tackle this yourself. I know it may seem intimidating, but it's really not that difficult. And once you get the hang of whatever piece of equipment you're running, it's actually quite enjoyable. I would say the most difficult portion of all this is just getting rid of your topsoil. So if that makes you uneasy, maybe you contract that piece out. I know from dealing with some people in the construction industry that building these driveways or roads can, uh, can be pretty expensive if you're paying for everything outright. And just as a point of reference, if you're out there just buying stone and wanting to know what it might cost you to build your driveway, I spent a little over $1,600 today for those four loads of number 53 limestone. I think each load was just under 21 ton, so call it 85 ton, for $1,600 delivered. So use that as a reference point. May be helpful, may not, but roughly what you expect to pay for stone at least around here with that said you guys should go get yourself one of those get yourself some gravel and build a driveway or two thanks for swinging through the channel i hope this was helpful for some of you out there who are getting ready to tackle your own driveway you can definitely do it and if you are starting a project like this drop a comment below happy to help you guys out or answer any questions you may have if you would hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one